Hello and welcome to the first mini Let's Play of the Play 21 Festival. Today we have with us uh, David Stark uh, from Switzerland and he brought with us his game Martian Immigration Nightmare. Welcome David. Hello. <laughs> How are you today? Yeah, pretty good. Still waking up, but uh, happy to be here. Okay, great. Uh, so for a warm up, I have a little something for you. Uh, basically, it's some sentences and uh, you have to try to complete them. So we can uh, try uh, the first one, just uh, that you know how things are working. And the, the first sentence uh, would be, this morning I drank... Coffee. Very nice. Okay, so yes. you get the idea. Uh, let's continue. Uh, this... Is this going to be a psychological profile? Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> let's see. Uh, so the time I function best is... Probably late at night when no one is bothering me. <laughs> um, when bored, I... Um, oh God, probably scroll through Twitter because that's, uh, you know, the terrible infection that I have. Yeah, very good idea. Uh, but there's a lot of news on there as well. So <laughs> hopefully that helps. It's great for your mental health, yeah. <laughs> um, my main occupation is... Game developer. Yay. <laughs> we make games for a living. It's oh, that's cool. cool. Yeah. Um, I would describe myself as... It's very soft. psychological. <laughs> Let's go with soft. <laughs> cool. Um, I'm thinking a lot about... Um, right now, I'm thinking a lot about diplomacy and um, artificial intelligence and how to teach computers to be interesting opponents. Ooh, yeah. And how it intersects with uh, theories of international um, relations. It's actually kind of interesting. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's, it's a perfect topic to, topic to research. Um, but is there... Uh, okay, uh, I really laugh um, my cats, for starters. That's a pretty cool. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's more personal than, than a topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, what is uh, other way around? Uh, my superpower is? Um, I can actually stop hiccuping anytime I want. Really? I, if I hiccup, I have a way of controlling my breathing and tensing certain muscles, and I can actually stop myself hiccuping. That's something you should teach. <laughs> yeah, great. yeah. I've, I've tried teaching people. I'm not sure how much nature versus, you know, uh, do you need to have a special mutation or something? Nice. But uh, I can do it. Cool. Um, the thing I'm holding in my hand most of the time is... It's going to be my phone, isn't it? Let's be honest. <laughs> okay. During the pandemic, I... Um, mostly stayed at home with my partners and uh, watch a lot of Netflix, like sure. everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> and after the pandemic, I will uh, do a lot of traveling. I hope I missed that. Yeah, that's, that's something a lot of people want, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah. Game creators are. Um, a whole bunch of different people uh, who actually want different things and it's silly to try and reduce game development to like the one true way of uh, doing things. Mm -hmm. And I'm creating interactive works because... I just like creating worlds and stories and so on. I, uh, I like doing that from when I was young um, and somehow making games is the particular w way I like doing it, but I think it's a different from uh, drawing or writing or whatever. Yeah, this maybe intersects a little bit, but uh, for me, games are... Well, Wittgenstein said that there was no definition of games. Sorry, that, that just comes to the, to the head there. Um, <laughs> 
I think uh, games are a, uh, a really interesting medium. And what I find interesting about games is exactly what, what makes them games and uh, what you can do with games that you can't do with uh, other media um, rather than trying to make games like books or like movies or like whatever else. I think it's most interesting to see what you can do only with games. Sure. Yeah, we will see that. And, you know, as a, as a final question, um, the future of games will be... <laughs> Televised? No, wait, no. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, I think uh, the future of games will kind of continue having this separation into more more tiers, where you where you have games which are increasingly high budget and um, you know kind of stick around forever, uh, and at the same time there are more and more people doing game development. Um, not necessarily making any money from it, but in a way, it, it, it is getting more uh, democratic. Yeah. Um, there are more possibilities for people, which is a different thing from possibilities to make money. True, but let's hope, you know, there's a whole universe out there like uh, libraries and museums and uh, much more people pushing those creators into, you know, the, uh, the forms we right now have for artists, but are just, you know, for I don't know, real art. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so that was it for for the little warm up. <laughs> you feel mm -hmm. warm up? Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that. Okay. Perfect. Um, so let's have a look at uh, your game you brought with us. Um, so we have here the intro screen, and it makes something pretty clear. It is uh, is a game about Elon Musk? Is it? Or it's dedicated to him at least. So, so what's the game about? Uh, so yeah, this is kind of a, the historical context of this is way back in 2017. Um, uh, the president of the United States, uh, Donald Trump, um, did uh, enacted this Muslim ban, as it was called, which was basically a uh, immigration ban uh, from people from certain uh, countries. Uh, what happened was uh, also that then uh, the TSA and other US government agencies basically took this as an opportunity to uh, go even beyond that and really try to stop people that didn't like them entering the country, um, confiscating their green cards, for example, is even people who were meant to have permanent res residency basically got kicked out. And so this game, what actually happens in it, is that you are a thinly veiled version of Elon Musk and you're trying to get to Mars with your uh, space rocket. But uh, it turns out that your immigration documents aren't uh, valid anymore and you now are trying to get to uh, onto that rocket somehow. Um, and the reason why it went for Elon Musk at the time was that he was active on Twitter saying like, oh, this isn't a big problem, you know, why are you complaining that much, it's fine. Uh, and he was also on this uh, presidential advisory council uh, at the time um, and uh, sort of supporting Trump in that way. He did later leave that council, uh, not because of that, because of some issues uh, regarding climate change. Um, but yeah, so the idea was basically to make a game that was just sort of getting, hey, you know, you want, he was all about, you know, I really want to get to Mars. I was like, so you want to get to Mars, but, uh, you know, people who just want to get back home to their families, you don't really care. So that was sort of the specific thing I was, I was trying to do here. I'd have made the game kind of in a, in a rage in a few days uh, just to kind of try and uh, push that specific um, angle. Um, and of course, now, you know, this is sort of history, you know, Musk has done a whole bunch of other really unpleasant things since then. Trump isn't president anymore. A lot of the Trump era um, immigration restrictions are actually still in place. But yeah, so yeah, now you're kind of working way through trying to figure out, I think, how to call your lawyer, how to, you know, figure out how to get through this. Um, yeah, nothing works. I can't call. That's really sad. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so the, I, as I said, I made it in a few days. Uh, the graphics were made by a local um, 
graphic uh, studio who I contracted to do it. Um, I, I then did the programming and the music. Um, nice. And yeah, so as you can see, it's sort of a frustrating and increasingly kind of frantic thing as you try to figure out how to actually get on that rocket. And uh, everyone's just like, well, this isn't really my problem. The rules say this. Oh, what do you mean the phone doesn't work? Well, you know, we refuse to understand that uh, telling you you can call your lawyer and then having a phone that doesn't work. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, and it's really a lot of it to scrap directly from what happened. Yeah, I felt it's also very uh, bureaucratic. Like the the people there, they're not really bad. They're just doing their job, but they are influenced mm -hmm. by a bad decision. And this I found very interesting. So that it's not you know they're they're not be uh, bad people in this game. Yeah, I think if anything, the game is too kind because uh, actually what happened at the Muslim ban was that uh, a lot of clearly very racist people in US government organizations were very happy to use it as an excuse to be extremely unpleasant. Um, so uh, if anything, this is too nice. Yeah. And uh, of course, one thing is also that it... Oh, look, you found some coins. Yeah, look, look, you're making progress. Let's... You're making progress. No. Oh. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, in a way, this actually kind of deletes the racial aspect of it, uh, which you know, it's it's doing that thing where you're where you're kind of putting uh, a bad thing that happened uh, that's racially influenced into a different context to try and make white people understand that things are bad by going, oh, what if it happened to white people? Yeah. Um, and so everyone's white here, and the, it's trying to force people to have some empathy by making them have more, have an experience that feels closer to their hearts. But of course, yes, it also deletes the racism aspect. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so as I said, it is time. So we have one final question yes. already. Um, so <laughs> the, the, the big one, of course. Uh, so, so this very much is a, a comment on things, as it's also a call. What do you think is more important for games, or what, what do you think uh, do games more? Are they more influencing society, or uh, are games like just a reflection of society? I mean, I think like any any other good medium, it's sort of this process where you have games that very much reflect society, that very much reflect, you know, the fears and anxieties and thoughts and so on, um, because that's automatically going to happen. And they're also commenting on it. And I think over time as games, you know, um, games like movies or whatever are, are in this sort of conversation with things. And this is a very political game that really makes a specific statement. And I'm absolutely not saying that all games need to be this in your face. But ultimately, whenever you're making a game, you are also making a statement, whether you want to or not. Here, it's just intentional. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to see more of these. Is this your, your general style? Do, do you do games like this or? No, actually, this is kind of an outlier. Uh, I make quite a lot of jam games. You can also go on my HR page. There's a whole bunch of them. Uh, and I just try different things. Uh, I think this is pretty much the only game that really has an explicit political message. Mm -hmm. um, the, there's a lot of games about horrible things happening to small simulated people um, yeah. and things like that. Uh, so I kind of try out things all over the place. And uh, my main project, uh, Airships, is actually a, a steampunk strategy game um, where you just kill a whole bunch of people for glory. Yeah. So. Mm. <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, what is the next big project or small project, you know, what people should check out? Uh, yes, I mean, look at my itch uh, page, uh, look up Airships Conquer the Skies. Uh, it's the project which I'm still working on. And after that, I have a whole bunch of prototypes and um, I will, I will uh, pick something from there and, uh, and make it. it. will probably again be about horrible things happening to small simulated people. Very nice. Okay, yeah, not nice, but <laughs> good. <Yeah. laughs> okay, uh, well, 
thank you for your time and uh, everybody in the exhibition go play it uh, you can try to see if you can catch the rocket maybe good luck <laughs> yes good luck uh, thank you and have a good day thank you bye-bye <laughs> bye-bye